I would like now to give the floor to His Excellency Bakhtiyor Ibargimov, Chair of Delegation of Uzbekistan. You have the floor, Excellency. Madam President, let me express my sincere gratitude for this opportunity to address from this high podium today. I would like to congratulate Your Excellency with your election as the President of the 73rd Session of the General Assembly of the United Nations. I would also like to commend the skillful leadership of His Excellency Miroslav Lachik at the 72nd Session of the General Assembly. Distinguished Delegates, Today, the Republic of Uzbekistan is on an important stage of radical and dynamic transformation. Their goal, strengthening the, and further developing a democratic law governing state with an open and social oriented market economy and vibrant civil society in which the main value are rights, freedom, and legal interests of individuals. At the initiative of President of the Republic of Uzbekistan, Shavkat Mirziyoyev, we adopt a five-year strategy of action aimed at fundamental changes in the economy, state governance, legal and social spheres, in the area of security in ensuring inter-ethnic and interconfessional peace and harmony. A principle, the people should not serve the state bodies, rather the state bodies should serve the people had become a co cornerstone of the main program of democratic reform. Elevating the role of parliament and political parties increasing accountability of the executive branch and transparency in its activity, strengthening institutes of public control and development of civil society have become practical embodiment of the constitutional principles. The people are the sole source of the state power. We are also taking significant steps on streamlining the national system of protection of human rights and freedom, strengthening independence of the judicial system. The use of child and forced labor has been seized. The recommendation of UN Council on Human Rights Treaty Bodies, UN High Commission on Human Rights and, Social, and Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Religion or Belief are being coherently implemented. We've carried out large-scale measures on liberalization of economy, creating conditions for free entrepreneurship, ensuring inviolability of private property, improving investment climate. Free convertibility of national currency had been introduced, access to bank credit had been expanded, and tax and custom reform had been carried out. According to the World Bank report doing business 2018, Uzbekistan was among the 10 leading countries that created favorable conditions for doing business. As a result, Today, Uzbekistan has acquired an image of a comprehensively renewed, open, and dynamically developing country. The chosen course of result reform has become irreversible and enjoys the broad support of the people of the country. Madam President, today we are witnessing an unprecedented process of formation of new alignment of power on global and regional levels. Rethinking the principles of international policy and economy, which until recently seemed to be unshakable, is underway. The world is becoming less predictable and unstable. The strength of effectiveness of multilateral institutions and mechanisms designed to ensure international security has been put on the test. In this regard, it's crucial to strengthen the central role of the United Nations in international relations, especially in supporting of the three pillars of the organization, that is, efforts on ensuring peace, security, and sustainable development of countries and regions, as well as the protection of human rights. Uzbekistan supports steps step taken by the leadership of the United Nations on streamlining the governing system of the organization, as well as it calls for gradual reforming its organs, including the Security Council taking into account today's realities and challenges. In addition, we are ready to actively participate in UN efforts on promoting comprehensive peace, stability, and development on the basis of respecting for human rights and freedom, democratization, and the rule of law. In this regard, Uzbekistan 
for the first time has nominated its candidate to the United Nations Council on Human Rights for the period 2021-2023. We sincerely hope that our achievement in the area of human rights will become a solid basis for the support of Uzbekistan candidacy by UN member states. We also count on the support of UN member states of the initiative of the President of Uzbekistan to develop and adopt a UN Convention on the Rights of Youth and the General Assembly Resolution entitled Enlightenment and Religious Tolerance. This document would facilitate effectively countering threat and terrorism and ideology of radicalism by solving vital social economic problems of youth, providing them with an access to quality education and enlightenment in the spirit of tolerance, humanism, and openness. Uzbekistan has already started working on the advancing these initiatives. In June 2018, jointly with foreign partners, we held an international conference on the role of youth in confronting religious extremism and terrorism. At the end of the conference, the participants adopted the Samarkand Declaration. In 2018, the world community celebrates the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. In this regard, the President of Uzbekistan has signed a decree on the program of events dedicated to this occasion. We have adopted a special state program for promoting the essence and significance of the first universal document on human rights, as well as for streamlining domestic legislation on human rights, law enforcement practices, and for Uzbekistan accession to new international treaties. Uzbekistan has also made voluntary contribution to the budget of the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights in the amount of 100,000 U.S. dollars. Currently, we are also taking an initiative at convening an Asian International Forum on Human Rights on November 22nd, 23rd, 2018 as the final event of our targeted practical work. The forum will take place in Samarkand City, which is, as per definition of UNESCO, is a crossroad of many world cultures. Madam President, Central Asia remains as the main foreign policy priority of Uzbekistan. Today, the situation in this region differs from the one we had not long ago. Thanks to joint efforts of the countries of the region, within a short period of time in Central Asia, We've created a fundamentally new political atmosphere, raised the level of political trust, strengthened traditionally friendly and good neighborly relations among ourselves. The important outcome of all of this work is the significant progress in resolving such acute issues as demarcation of borders, management of the water resources, and the joint use of transport communication. One should note that these the very issues had not only remained unresolved for an extended period of time, but also were sources of regional tension. The agreement with neighboring countries allowed to open dozens of checkpoints on the borders of Uzbekistan and liberalize the visa regime. The agreement with uh, Uzbekistan trade turnover with the state of the region increased by 20% in 2017 and by 50% during the first six months of the current year. In the near future, at the initiative of Uzbekistan, we are planning to convene a regional economic forum, which should serve as a permanent functioning platform for representative business community to discuss regional projects in the field of trade economic, investment, and innovative cooperation. The first consultant meeting of the head of state of Central Asian countries held last March in Astana became the bright symbol of a new era of regional cooperation. The next forum will take place in March next year in Tashkent. Most importantly, we are now more convinced that we are united not only by our one past, but by our common future. The high level of regional interaction in Central Asia received broad international support. In this regard, I would like to express our sincere gratitude to all our partners and friends who have recently rendered assistance in the preparation and adoption of the historically important resolution of the United Nations General Assembly, strengthening regional 
and international cooperation in secure peace, stability, and sustainable development in Central Asia. No doubt that this UN document acknowledges the formation of Central Asia as a single consolidated region, the Council of which I want to put special emphasis on this are capable by joint effort to solve common regional problems, to ensure well-being and for the future for their population of 70 million. In order to deepen, multi, further deepen multifaceted cooperation in our region, Uzbekistan proposes to develop and adopt a UN General Assembly draft resolution on developing sustainable tourism in Central Asia, which would facilitate utilizing unique tourism potential of the region through which the Great Silk Road stretched in the past, connecting East and West by trade, cultural, and civilizational ties. The sustainable development of Central Asia stipulates maintaining ecological equilibrium in the region, which directly depends on the mitigation of the consequences of the drying up of the RLC. For the past several years, Uzbekistan had implemented a number of large-scale projects in the RLC zone, Uzbekistan has initiated the establishment of multi-partner human security trust fund for the RLC, which was supported by the United Nations. President of Uzbekistan, Shavkat Mirziyev, during his seventh, uh, speech at the 72nd session of the United Nations General Assembly last year, and at the recent summit of the International Fund for Saving the RLC held on August 24 this year in Turkmenistan, again reminded about this initiative. The establishment under the auspice of the United Nations of this multi-partner human security trust fund for the RLC is an, is an attempt to highlight major risks that pose a threat to the vulnerable population and also opens a new level of dialogue aimed at comprehensive human-based solution which focuses on the real needs of people taking into account existing risks and challenges. We hope for an over, overall support of the United Nations of this initiative taken by Uzbekistan. Madam President, when we speak about Central Asia, we cannot help but to mention Afghanistan, the country which we consider a historical part of the single cultural civilizational space of our region. Stable Afghanistan is a prerequisite for the sustainable development of Central Asia as a whole. Recently, Uzbekistan had notably expanded its bilateral relation with Afghanistan, actively joined multilateral efforts on resolving the Afghan problem, and is making real contribution to restoring the country's economy, as well as to developing close trade economic and transport communication ties. In March of the current year in Tashkent, we convened the Conference on Afghanistan. As President of Uzbekistan, Shavkat Mirziyayev stated during his address at the conference, and I quote, we are ready at any stage of the peace process to create all necessary conditions for organizing on the territory of Uzbekistan the direct negotiation between the government of Afghanistan and the Taliban movement. The unanimous adoption of the Tashkent Declaration has become the main outcome of the conference. It reinforced a firm consensus on the regional and global level on the necessity of the early launch of the direct negotiation between the government of Afghanistan and the Taliban movement without any preliminary conditions. We are convinced that the readiness of confronting parties to mutual negotiation in the name of vital interests of the multinational Afghan people would become a solid basis for advancing peace process in this country. Madam President, in Uzbekistan we recognize that the success of the large-scale program of democ democratic transformation outlined in the current strategy of action, as well as our foreign policy initiative aimed at facilitating international peace and stability, will to a large extent depend on the support of our friends and partners and the international community as a whole. Therefore, Uzbekistan is open for broad international dialogue. We are sincerely interested in Uzbekistan's further integration into political and economic ties, developing constructive and mutually beneficial cooperation with all interested countries. Thank you for your attention, Madam President.
أرجو أن أتقدم بالشكر لسعادة بختيار إبراهيموف رئيس وفد أوزبكستان والمندوب الدائم